today on the Chat and Chew Show. So we we titled tonight, you know, Be the Change, uh, uh, a conversation on race. And when I was coming home from uh, work today, I was starting to think about that. And I'm like, be the change. For so long, we have, as Christians, been told, walk in love. You know, you don't want to ruffle the feathers and all that. But it, I, I started getting a little bit upset. I mean, if I could be honest, I started getting mad. I'm like, I don't want to be the change. I don't want to be the one who has to lay down and let you walk all over me. So, gentlemen, I would love to hear uh, your perspective on, as a, again, as a Christ follower, I know the Bible talks about walking love, but in this type of climate where we're seeing, you know, uh, people being um, injured by the police and we're seeing just outright racism happening in our country right now, do we just lay back and be the change? Or do we, how can we be proactive in making things happen and change and, and moving with the time? Okay. Well, hello, everybody, all of our guests here and people who are joining us on Facebook. You have clicked on to the Chat and Chew Show, and we are a show designed to empower people to do their relationships better. And I always say that um, you don't have to be in a romantic relationship. It's not what we're talking about only, but we're talking about any kind of relationship. I, I forgot to say my name. My name is Betty. I'm one of your hosts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm Roxanne. <laughs> and we are the hosts of the Chat and Chew Show. Vanessa's our producer. And uh, again, like I was saying, that everybody is in a relationship. And we have some relationships in our lives that are hugely important. And then we have other relationships with just kind of who we go to work with, who we pass in the grocery store. And we want to do those relationships well. But we find that sometimes, you guys, if you're honest, you can bump into a snag in a relationship and you don't know what to do. So the Chat and Chew show is here to give you tips and tools and tricks and things that you can think about to be able to make your relationships better. And I always say every relationship can improve. Um, so you may be a mother, an auntie. You might be, uh, I don't know, a mailman. <laughs> give me some other things, Roxy. You could be a hairstylist, which is also important, or a barber. Like, yeah. have you ever tried to break up with your hairstylist or barber? <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> You can't, can't, what do you say? What do you right. say? <laughs> or like you cheated uh, on them and then you got to go back. That's hard. <laughs> so how do you navigate through that relationship? So again, we're here uh, to give you tips and tools. Hey, every Tuesday we release a new episode and we're doing something different today where we are on Facebook Live. And so we're super excited to have you join us. Hey, we want to hear from you. So if you're in the chat, or I don't know really how Facebook works, but you know, you, you can just let us know uh, that you're here and we want to do a shout out to you also. Well, we have two important, important guests because we're going to be talking about a topic today that's affecting everybody, and that is racism in our country. And uh, we wanted to uh, tackle this from a different uh, point of view. We wanted to handle it more from, I'm a Christ follower, how should I navigate these tumultuous times. I mean, am I going to get out there and I'm going to fight and beat up the police and, or beat up someone else? How am I going to manage uh, as I do this? So we got two guests with us who are going to help us navigate through it. We have Elder John and Pastor Elwood Jones. And so if you would give them a hand clap. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you for being here, you guys. <laughs> oh, you got to snap with yours. <laughs> and so, it's got to be so, different. <laughs> yeah, got to be different. So Elder John, let's just start with you. Just tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are and, and what you do. And um, why do you think this topic, to talk about it at this time, everybody else is talking about it too, but why should we uh, be talking about it at this time? Well, I am an elder over at Victory Christian Church International, um, church administrator, actually. Um, for some, what is that? Sort of like the assistant pastor. And I'm also a radio host, had a radio show on Radio One uh, for about four years uh, called Vision for Change. Um, we flipped it to a podcast now, of course, with COVID. And um, working with our community here in Gaithersburg on um, uh, race relations. And I think it's really important because of what we're dealing with. Is some, what we're dealing with is really nothing new. This is uh, something that's been going on for uh, years and years. I just think now that we have uh, access to social media and, um, you know, the internet, and we're seeing so much, and it's a hot topic. So, of course, CNN and Fox News are going to publicize it. We need to address it. It's something that needs to be talked about. 
is something that needs to uh, not just be talked about. We need to start moving on, getting some of the change because we've known we've had these issues for years. So yeah. I think what we're doing tonight, and I thank you ladies uh, first for just having me to have a conversation like this. I appreciate the opportunity to serve in this manner. So um, I think we've been at a whole bunch of things tonight and I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Pastor Elwood, you're yeah. a very special person to me. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so so um, yeah, my name is Pastor Elwood. Um, Actually, you can call me Elwood. I feel I know. Actually, I'm going to call you. We, actually, I'm going to call first you. First name basis. I'm going to actually call you Honey. Go ahead. Okay, okay, Honey. All right, all right. I will not. I will not. <laughs> so, so um, I, I pastor a church um, in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, Landmark Church of Alexandria. And um, the reason why this topic is really important to me is because you know, I grew up um, in Alexandria where there was busing. I went to an elementary school called Stonewall Jackson, a Confederate, and and mm -hmm. essentially went to T.C. Williams High School, uh, which you probably remember the 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 movie, Remember the Titans. And so, mm -hmm. um, I've always been in in this whole idea of how do we get along and and build unity in the community. And so, our church is is that way. We're a, multiracial church and um, have different kinds of people there. And we like to say we're a safe space for people looking for a place to belong. And, um, but that's fleshed out in my life. I just, I, you know, the way I, you know, I, I, I'm working on a book now called A Naive Black Man in a White World. <laughs> ooh, uh, because ooh. I was the guy, I was the guy in elementary school where people said, uh, when I would come around some white people, uh, they would say, uh, he's not like them. Mm. Crickets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. so for a long time, um, you know, I was in somewhat denial about what racism really looks like and the effects of it, because in my household, my mom and dad never talked bad about any other race. And so I didn't have the pain of racism, uh, until I got older. And so, um, so anyway, that's a little yeah. bit of my story. So we we titled tonight, you know, Be the Change, uh, uh, a conversation on race. And when I was coming home from um, work today, I was starting to think about that. And I'm like, be the change? Mm. For so long, we mm -hmm. have, as Christians, been told, walk in love. You know, you don't want to ruffle the feathers and all that. But it, I, I started getting a little bit upset. I mean, if I could be honest, I started getting mad. I'm like, I don't want to be the change. I don't want to be the one who has to lay down and let you walk all over me. So gentlemen, I would love to hear uh, your perspective on, as a, again, as a Christ follower, I know the Bible talks about walking love, but in this type of climate where we're seeing, you know, uh, people being um, injured by the police and then we're seeing just outright racism happening in our country right now, do we just lay back and be the change? Or do we, how can we be proactive in making things happen and change and, and moving with the times? Hmm. I, I, I was off the top with it. I think you got that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I say this, um, you know, sometimes when we think of love, we think love is that lay down and get walked all over. Um, I have always taught my kids that, you know, you know, the Bible, you know, people want to quote, the people that want to abuse you want to quote the Bible and says, you know, you're supposed mm -hmm. to turn the other cheek, mm -hmm. but you keep hitting me. And so I said, no, I teach my children that, that, you know, that's not really what that means about get beat up, you know, you defend yeah. yourself, but the Bible does say speak the truth in love. And sometimes your speaking has to come in actions. Uh, it will come in the actions of protest. It will come in the actions of litigation. It can come in many different ways. You're speaking your truth. Uh, it can be done in love. You know, I can say things in a manner where it's not disrespectful. I'm not um, dogging you. I'm not criticizing you. Uh, but I don't think that when we are talking about love, it means to be walked all over. Mm -hmm. um, I think even with Jesus, you know, we said, well, he was killed and abused and people always want to put that to you in our face. And okay, yeah, but it still was an open, the Bible said he made an open show of them in hell. So he purposely laid his life down so that we can gain the authority and the power. Mm -hmm. So I believe that when we're, we're walking in love, we should stand up for what's right. We should not be walked all over. We should not be abused. And mm -hmm. so um, we can't help but be emotional about it at times. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I think we'll get into this a little bit tonight. There's a strategic emotion. I'll use that terminology that we should use 
in order for us to get what is right and, and stand for justice. Mm -hmm. What would you yeah. say to that, Elwood? Yeah, so, are you, so again, the question is, how do you contextualize love in this hot climate? Is that- Right, what? yeah, yeah. yeah. People, are, people are mad, they're upset. Yeah. I mean, you may know someone who has gone through you know, something you yourself have experienced, yeah. you know, racism that's prevented you from moving forward or, or you know, cause a trauma in your family. Like, yeah. how, I mean, how are we supposed to navigate that? You know, um, I, I'm going to have to take a little bit of different approach. Um, if love was based on how I feel and, and, and how I act out of how I feel, I'd be in trouble right now. Um, but mm. because mm. something else is going on, you know, and the something else is, is uh, again, I'm going to take it more from a biblical stamp because that's, you know, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't even be on this conversation right now. Mm. So I made a commitment that God so loved the world that he, you know, I made a commitment to that God that he loved the world and all this sickness and all this pain. And he's also commissioned us to do the same. And so uh, love is never easy. You know, um, I, I agree. I agree with the elder. You, love is, is not your ability to be stepped on, but love does give you ability to, to, uh, to even pardon some of the ignorance of other people. Uh, love gives you this, this power up by way of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible talks about the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by way of the Holy Spirit. And so, um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I want to be careful about this because um, I've made a commitment. Betty and I, in, I think in our 30 years, we've only been at an African-American church for four years in our entire life. Every other church we've been to, except for our own church, has been a mostly white church. I'll never forget when Betty and I moved to St. Mary's County and, we, and as, as a, a pastor of this church, and we made a commitment that we're going to be the 5% of African Americans in that church that's going to love unconditionally. The first Sunday that we were there, somebody called my son the N-word. Mm. So what do you do with that? First of all, I didn't know this until <laughs> later. I couldn't tell you. We, we never told you that. Yeah. So is, is there a reason? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, Roxanne? I said, so you're still mad right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Betty's like, had I known. <laughs> so no, no greater love than this than a man will lay down his life for his brother. Jesus laid down his life for us in all of our brokenness, all of our sin, all of our hurt, all our hatred, all our pain, all of our vices. And in the same way, God gives us this opportunity to do the same without being trampled on. So I know that so, sounds crazy. I know. So it's making me think, and I'm thinking our audience is thinking this too. So we know of a person who recently had a situation, a, a woman with the police and her two uh, adult children. And the police were coming after her adult sons, they're African-American, and they were saying things to them that we heard in the news, you know, they, mm -hmm. they're getting into it, the police with the sons who didn't do anything wrong. And the police was aggressive to the sons. To the police. Did, so right. as the mom, I mean, the sons weren't, you know, they, you know, how you, they knew how to behave. But she was so angry. And I'm thinking, as a Christ follower in that situation, just to make this real practical, when you say, mm -hmm. you know, walk in love, they called our son the N-word. I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't go like, oh, well, you know. I mean, we didn't handle it that way. But if you could just mm -hmm. talk honestly about yeah. like that situation with the mom and her yeah. two kids, and she's there watching this, and then us with the N-word. Like, what should someone do? Yeah, lo love, love confronts with truth, and love defends. Yeah, the mom defended aggressively her sons. That's love, mm -hmm. right? And she's willing to let, in fact, I know the story behind that. She actually put herself in harm's way mm -hmm. for her son. But I'm saying that's love too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm, so yeah, I'm, so so are you saying, should she hate the police? Is that is that the question? Well, I was just saying, give us practical. What do you do in a situation like that? So. So you're ready for the practical on that? <laughs> so what? No, I'm, but I'm, but I, I want to just make, I want to be clear about what you're asking though. So yeah. should I hate the police? So you're I saying I don't think you should. Yeah. Okay. 
But uh, yeah, so so what is- but, but does that happen? Do you, as a mother, watching your child go through, or your children go through something like that, end up, even if you're a Christian, having some type of hatred towards the police? And if you do, what do you do with those feelings? That's you, Elwood. Oh, I, you said mother. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. No, I was like, saying, no. <laughs> as a parent, as, as a, a parent, that way. Yeah. So, so I, I guess I'm. I want to really get into. I'm trying to hear what is the question and make sure I can answer it correctly. How do I handle my my pain? Mm -hmm. I mean, do, it's. It, I think it's possible to be angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's possible that. I'm look when I see when I saw the 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 police who had his knee on the neck of George Floyd, I was angry about that. But here's the problem with the hatred part. I there are bad policemen out there, but there are also good policemen who are my friends. You see what I'm saying? So so what do I do? Do I hate all of the police because there the, because there are a lot of bad police who do a lot of bad things to African Americans. Like, like let's just be honest and truthful about that. So, so, so I, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I'm. I want to answer the. You, the you're question. answering it right. Yeah, you can. Yeah. We get it. Yeah. So yeah. don't hate all police, but it, to me it sounds like you're saying when a situation ha happens, speak up. That doesn't yeah. mean you go get your gun and start shooting up the place. Right. You speak right. up about what is happening yeah. and you confront what is happening and you do what you need to do to yeah. cause change. I yeah. think that mother with her two adult kids, and I know this, you know, of course, you know, the situation, yeah. I mean, she spoke up right then and there at risk to her own self. Can, can I, can I just share a progression that I've had in my life? Um, when Betty and I, and I'll be very transparent about this. We moved to St. Mary's County in 2009. January of 2009. What happened in January of 2009? Do y'all remember? President Obama. President Obama mm -hmm. was inaugurated in 2009. We moved in 2009 in the good old St. Mary's County. And, uh, and here I am working with 95% Caucasian white. And I couldn't even celebrate the president who I was proud of because I knew that my ministry would be completely sabotaged. I wouldn't even be able to minister correctly to you if you knew. I would be in meetings where I would hear people say, make statements like those people. I, I've been, I've been, I've been, and where I would have to, I would have to make the statement. I said, wait, hey, am I here right now? Do you hear what you're saying? Or, or I would hear, uh, you know, those libs, those Democrats. And I, I'll be honest, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a liberal, I'm not even a Republican. I'm just, uh, maybe I'm moderate. I don't know what I am right now. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, I'm the same way. <laughs> you, you feel me? And so, so, so I'm just saying, um, when you're put in a position where, and so here's what I'm trying to get to. This is what I'm saying, here's my progression. I wasn't truthful. My progression now is I'm willing to tell the truth. Let me just say this last thing about that. There used to be an algorithm on Facebook where uh, you could actually look and see how many people are white, how many people, I don't know how they get this stuff, right? And how many liberals, how many Republicans. And uh, pre Barack Obama, 75% of my friends on one of my Facebook pages, 75% were Caucasian white. You want to guess how many are Caucasian white now? And mostly evangelicals. This is after eight years of Barack Obama and four years of President Trump, I may have 25% evangelical, white evangelicals on my page. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I, I, I refuse to not walk in telling the truth, which I think is love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So Elder John, uh, we're, we're going to switch gears a tiny bit. In culture mm -hmm. right now, there's a gigantic movement happening, and that is the Black Lives Matter. And now people have different, you know, opinions about the Black Lives Matter. You know, some people don't want to get involved because they think other things are hooked into it that they disagree with. But but nevertheless, it's a movement that's happening right now with the focus mm -hmm. mostly on, um, you know, Black people, you know, people of color. But sometimes when you say Black Lives Matter, you get this pushback. Well, all lives matter, or blue lives matter. So can you just talk about why it's important 
us not to hook if you would, all lives matter, blue lives matter, doctors' lives matter, <laughs> you know, and all of that. And maybe just talk to why to saying Black Lives Matter is, is needed right now. Uh, I think when we hear someone say all lives matter, uh, this is just, again, I'm, it's my personal experience and perspective, is they're trying to get away from the conversation mm. um, because of what is currently happening. Uh, of course, we all know this. I don't think anybody um, is ignorant enough to say, well, no, all lives do not matter. Nobody's saying that. So mm -hmm. to say all lives matter is to divert or to say, hey, you know all lives matter. So why are we trying to lump this to separate people? I had one gentleman say, you're trying to separate yourselves. You're separating yourselves. I said, no, I think what's happening, if you look at the real numbers of what's happening of incarceration of African-Americans and um, the murders by police officials, um, the civil service that we pay, you know, uh, we're seeing a, a, a great difference. And so somebody has to say something about the Black Lives Matter. I think it's important for believers because what for us, let's just say us African-Americans, we need to speak what we need to have. The Bible tells us that what we confess. So that's part of our confession. So we need to say it. So there is certain pride in ourselves. We sometimes look at the media and we see the, uh, the folks that are aggressive and protesting, but there are those who, uh, when I first moved from New York to Maryland, um, I didn't have pride in being black like that. My mother put it into me, but mm -hmm. everywhere I went was white. Everything that we saw was white. Everything that was, the system was white in the mm -hmm. school system, everything was that. Mm -hmm. So on a subconscious level, you almost are mentally devalued to yourself. And so there are some people out there that are not going to say it out loud. They're not going to speak it like that because, you know, with social media, people jump on them, you know, but yeah, do they have pride? So somebody has to say it to give them the courage to know, hey, your life does matter. Mm -hmm. My children need to know that your life does matter. No matter what's going on, what's happening, uh, you need to know that your life matters. And then you need to say it to those who are, um, I'm not, now um, let me clarify this. I'm not saying all white people are oppressors or that type of thing. But there are people who think they're better than Black people, that think they are above, and they need to hear you say that my life matters. Black lives do matter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm finding that there are several white people that don't know anything about Black history. Mm -hmm. All they know is Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Malcolm mm -hmm. X, he was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, <laughs> Mar you, know, you, you know, Barack Obama, Jesse Jackson, you know, they, they know surface stuff. They don't know what African Americans have contributed to this country and to this world. Yeah. And so when now these things are happening and things are coming out, um, you'd be surprised at how many people don't know about Black Wall Street. Not even the Black people know about that. Yeah. Rosewood, all these different yeah. things. Yeah. And some of, the, some of the caucus I've talked to don't even believe that even happened. Yeah, go back and look at history. This took place. And so when we're saying Black Lives Matter, I think it is prophetic that we're saying those things, not that we're trying to separate. Yes, I do believe what Roman says, we're all of one blood. Um, but right now, I mm -hmm. think we still need to speak that um, yeah. and say that so folks can understand that we are strong, we are united, and no, everybody might not, and again, it's a phrase, you have to uh, differentiate the, the phrase from the organization, mm -hmm. because as a believer, I don't um, affirm what that organization stands for, some of the things that they're doing, but when I say that phrase, I want you to know that I stand that our lives matter. Trayvon's Mar life, Trayvon Martin's life, it matters. Mm -hmm. uh, Tamir, Tamir Rice, his life matters. Sandra Bland, her life matters. You know, all these folks that we saw in the last six to seven years that were murdered in the street unjustly. And we can't forget, you know, we've got so much going on with the election, but uh, the the um, Auburn in Georgia, this guy was jogging and he was killed. Hmm. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, that young man's life mattered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have to say yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. If you're watching on Facebook, again, we're super thrilled you're with us. You're joining in a conversation where we're talking about uh, Be the Change and uh, a conversation on, on race in this country. Uh, I also want to invite you to post your questions. We got two gentlemen here who are our, our guests. Um, Elder John and then Pastor Elwood, and they are just open and ready to take your questions and make them hard <laughs> questions too. <laughs> I did, y did, that, that wasn't in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this, this this can be a difficult topic for people. Um, 
you know, going through. And I'm thinking as a mom, I have three boys. Uh, one of my children is a man living on his own now. And, uh, you know, just not, I don't worry, worry about him, but I think about him being out there on those streets and just being again, you know, having to navigate through if the police stop you, you know, um, and it's important, like you were saying, Elder John, that he knows that my life does matter, even though out there, that's not the message that I'm getting that I don't matter. So uh, we're going to actually take a short break. And this show is called the Chat and Chew Show. <laughs> and the reason it is called the Chew Show is because we have food segments and we have our uh, uh, home cook K is our, I don't even know what to call you, Miss Carla. <laughs> This is the first time we're doing this, so we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back after the break. A little bit better. Mm -hmm. Now, a delicious word. Let's choose. Hey, it's Carla, a.k.a. Home Cook K, and today I'm sharing with you a brownie recipe. So I'm not really a baker, um, but when I found this recipe, I thought it was simple, easy enough, not too many ingredients, nothing rising, which made it simple for me to get some good comfort food when I needed it. So you wanna start by putting four ounces of chocolate, unsweetened chocolate. I used a baking bar and add to it eight tablespoons of butter. You wanna stir continuously until both the chocolate and butter are melted, which takes about five minutes. All right, so next we wanna start adding our ingredients. As you see, the uh, butter and chocolate is melted together. We wanna add one cup of sugar. I found this tip in the comment section of the recipe, actually substituting a quarter cup of the sugar with brown sugar to add a depth of flavor. Sea salt, a quarter teaspoon. And then I have a teaspoon of vanilla. So add that all in there and stir it. See, now it's combined. Wanna add in one egg at a time. Egg, drop it in, stir it in. And then drop the other egg in. Stir it in. And now we want to add a half cup of flour. So one of the comments also said that you want to make sure that your flour is not tightly packed in because that will prevent or rather cause the brownies to be crumbly. So, you wanna stir it for about a minute, all the ingredients combined, and until you see the brownie mix, the batter, pulling easily off the sides. We just sped this part up here so you could see. We stir continuously and then I pour it into a foil, uh, lightly greased, eight square inch pan. I use the end of the spoon to make sure it is spread throughout. So the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. Just wanna stick it in the oven for 20 minutes for it to bake. So another tip that I learned for this recipe to make brown brownies fudgy and delicious, you wanna put it into an ice bath. I'm using my sink. I've seen other people use some of those disposable foil packs as well. You wanna make sure you put it in gently 
so the water doesn't splash, but that you have a, about an inch of water in ice. The goal is that the ice bath helps cool the brownies to keep them fudgy and delicious. After about five minutes in the ice bath, I put it on the countertop to cool for another hour. Now you see we have fudgy, delicious brownies. The sea salt along with the sugar and brown sugar create a great combination. It's a perfect when paired with vanilla bean ice cream. Mmm, delicious. I hope you enjoy. But <laughs> I, I know I'm, I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at this during the day. I'm going, oh my god! Okay, did we get this? Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I was, I was nice, trying, man. I was we trying. We came back from commercial and chewed on those things. <laughs> I know, I know. We should have planned that. Yeah, I mailed everybody a brownie. Uh -huh. no. Next time we'll think about you know think ahead, plan ahead. <laughs> Ice cream with the brownie, though. That warm brownie with oh, the ice cream. Oh, I know. Ooh, I, know. Mm, I can taste oh, it. Okay, get all that. right. Y'all making me hungry. About... I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Wait, okay, we got to get serious, y'all. We got to get serious. We're talking about race. Yeah, Carla said next time. Carla said next time on the comments. Okay, next time. Okay, okay cool, cool. <laughs> uh, we got we're focusing. Focusing on race. All yeah. right. Got Racism it. in America. Mm -hmm. See, I had to say that stern so we knew we were getting serious about it. Right. You but, did. In America, too. You said in America. In America. 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 Yeah. America. That's when you're really serious about it. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so we're talking with Elder John and Pastor Elwood, if you're just joining us. And um, we're talking about race. And I wanted to talk about just like protests versus um, rioting. Like, I actually had an issue myself during, like, I kept calling my brother. And I'd be like, yeah, you know, because I had to stay inside during the riots. And I just kept saying that <laughs> for some reason. Right. And like people maybe like, you know, people were protesting. And you know, there were a lot of mixed um ideas about what was going on, who was doing it too, you know, because there were some people that weren't even part of the Black Lives Matter um movement out there looting and things like that. But just what are your views on, especially as a Christian, on protesting versus rioting is there any justification you know like Betty says when you get mad to to go out and and make your voice heard in a very aggressive way via a riot yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> well you know I mean I often wonder what would it have been like if Dr. Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement didn't happen like if there weren't peaceful marches um, we think things are bad now, right? And so, um, so, so I think there is a difference between um, peaceful marching and, uh, in fact, I even, like when you look at it worldwide, you see that marches are significant for change. It's, mm -hmm. it's clear. Um, but I, 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 I put, wrote this down. Um, Martin Luther King says that a riot it's the language of the unheard. Like there, there's a reason for rioting. You know, when people get pushed against the wall over and over, now, you know, now I'm not, and I'm sure Martin Luther King wasn't validating rioting. You, of course, we know that because some people wanted him to be aggressive with it. And he just decided that he was going to take, you know, a peaceful, and one, I think one of the scriptures that he lived by was, um, live at peace with all men as much as is possible. Right. Um, so I, I think there are two different things. I think one is very pr productive. Can I be very honest about this one though? I, I think, and so I'm probably going to get in trouble on this. I, I think both of them, I, I'm, I'm in trouble. I already know because I, I have white friends that's watching this right now. They ain't going to agree with me on this. So I'm just going to put it out there. I, I am not for rioting. But I think peaceful marching 
has positive results. And for whatever reason, sometimes rioting causes change as well. I don't condone it. I don't think it's right. Uh, but I know a city right now that was ravaged. And, um, and, and I thought it was unfortunate that this urban city was ravaged. But there's been a lot of money and a lot of change and a lot of social awareness that came not just because of the peaceful marching, but also because of the rioting. I know that's not popular what I'm saying, but it is what it is. And so again, it's, it's when riots happen, when people feel like they aren't being heard and seen. Wow. So next time we're going to be out there <laughs> throwing <laughs> bricks and <laughs> getting TVs and stuff. Oh, we as he doesn't condone it. We as Christians, <laughs> right, right, but but hey, right, but we as Christians, we don't do that. That's how. Yeah. That's not how we handle it. Right. right? We're not supposed to. But not supposed to. <laughs> uh, not supposed to. Can I? Can I? Can I get in trouble? Can I get in trouble with you too, Pastor? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, come on, man. Come on over here. Good trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. Oh, yeah, right. good trouble. Good trouble. Um, I'll say this, you know, um, no, I don't want anybody to lose their business, destruction of the property. I'm not for that. But yeah. um, this country, um, when it first was founded, was founded off riots, the Boston Tea Party, you know, the Risky mm -hmm. Rebellion. You know, um, there were so many. You can go back and look at history mm -hmm. and see that. And, and mind you, these were not um, Black people doing this. <laughs> you know, this, this rioting started because they, and, and again, there's a difference between protesting peaceful protest and writing. Mm -hmm. And I think when people, as you said, Pastor, when their backs are against the wall, um, people feel like I'm not heard. What, what can I do? I'm so tired of this. And we're talking about lives being lost. This is where this all began recently of people being murdered by civil servants. And it's painful. It hurts. Um, I've been a part of several protests up here in Montgomery County. Um, one um, that is very noted to me was the Clarksburg. I saw people of, oh my goodness, all ages. Uh, it was so diverse. I saw different cultures, races. I mean, I saw so many people, old, young. It just, it was amazing to see everybody come together to stand in unity. And I, I was feeling at that point, we had gone to the Gaithersburg protest, and I was feeling like god i can't believe we're still dealing with this mm. it, this is incredible that we are still dealing with this mm. and it's and it's now just you know i know that we're living in the end times i know we're seeing some of these things but to, to watch a man murdered in the street like that that was so painful mm -hmm. but then when i went to that protest i was so inspired and encouraged that uh i'm not alone mm. as a black man i feel like there are more people today that are are involved with this and want to see the change. And so uh, just to bring it full circle with the writing piece, I think it's getting the attention. Now, I think that we are seeing the media and some of the folks who don't like it that we might be in trouble with, <laughs> um, uh, they think it's violent. But if you think about any change that we've gotten concerning race has been violent, it just depends on how you define violence. Mm. Um, it had to have a sit in the Greensboro, North Carolina, that was a violent move. Mm. Um, the bus boycott, that was a violent move because we had to see something happen. Mm. So it affected the money and then we eventually got to change, but if we didn't take those violent moves, we wouldn't be where we are today. Mm. And if you can go back and look at history, they, the same things that you are hearing today is just an echo of what they said, why are they upset? Why are they mad? Why are they doing this? Why are they, they, they? And there's a separate, they're looking at us as being separate. No, we're speaking out because we are hurting. Yeah. And, and it's so good right now to see that there are different cultures and even around the world that are standing for justice. Yeah. yeah. And I believe justice is going to prevail. Yeah. 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 We had a before, um, oh, sorry. I just, I just want us to, can we just talk about the role that the media plays in this protesters versus riots? Um, because I feel like that's what changes the perspective of everything, like how the media portrays um, one versus the other. Do you guys have any um, takes on that? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, be the bottom line 
So a lot of this, if we, and, and I'm glad I've got Christian people here online because you understand the spiritual um, perspective of this, you know, um, it's really, when you get clear to smoke, it's not about black, white, it's, it's just, a, it's the demonic that's, that's happening. And so I believe Satan will use whatever he can to try to get into our eyes, our ears, to get to our heart. And if the media, if we are, if we're not pay, careful and we're not looking at things from the right perspective, we'll be influenced by the media. And I look at it from a, a perspective of a, of, a, of a Caucasian person. If he grew up watching television, he's got no encounters or no hanging out with African-Americans. All I've got is television. And so if you guys can think back, I remember back, I'm, I'm about to tell my age, I was young though, uh, when we had the hostages at Iran. I ran at taking hostages in the late 70s, early 80s. Everybody hated Iran. I remember Mickey Mouse with the middle finger and all those things that, 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 was, that was popping up because we hated Iran. Then Iran became our friend and the Soviets was our enemy. So when you saw Rocky three, or Rocky was Rocky four, you know, the, the Soviets was the enemy, you know? <laughs> and then we had the problem with the Middle East. Now we hate Iraq, <laughs> you know? So the media kind of just, portrayed something. And so now even with this and the writing, Vanessa, as you ask the question, you know, if you just see people throwing rocks at buildings and you see cars on fire, it will give to middle America who knows nothing about, who don't hang around a lot of African Americans, the perspective that they're violent people. They are angry. They're fight. This is why I don't want, I mean, years ago, I think there was a movie called Birth of a Nation. It was in the early 1900s. And when um, the, it was really a, a movie that promoted the Klan. I don't know if, I know you guys might've learned this in history, you know, but it's a movie called Birth of Nation. And they were showing that the black man was the bad person pushing white people off the sidewalk and all kind of crazy mess. And so the Klan was the hero. They had to come and defend that. That's full circle. Satan has got that thing going full circle now that when you look at the media, it's looking at these are violent people. Most of them are Democrats. So we don't want the Democrats. Most of the cities that you see on fire and burning up, they're Democrat led cities. Another way of saying that they're, they're letting black people control you know, what's going on. And that's why we got the violence. And so if you're not careful, you can look at one media outlet, CNN, and you'll get one perspective. You can look at another media outlet, Fox News, and you'll get a whole nother perspective. But the truth is somebody has to come up with something and say, here's what's really happening. Forget all that stuff. That's not everywhere you look is not being, windows are not being broken. People are not burning cars everywhere. There are people out there really protesting and crying out for justice. Mm -hmm. And that is what needs to be broadcast. So Vanessa, to answer your question, I think the media perpetuates fear sometimes. Yeah. 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 And not only that, I don't know, there was a, um, a, a special on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. And they talked about how even the algorithms in, in Google and a lot of social media, it shows you what more of what you want to see. Mm. So when people mm -hmm. Google in different areas, you're actually, you and I might not get the same results in Google. Even when we Google mm -hmm. <laughs> and people mm -hmm. like go there for information. And so people see more and more of what they want to see. So if I have like just, a, you know, if I have something, a seed planted, you know, that man, these black people are out of control you know, they're, they're, they're dangerous, they're violent. Yeah. I can kind of take myself down a rabbit hole via the internet. It doesn't even have to be TV that tells mm -hmm. me more and more about how violent black people are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now my warped sense of belief is, is reinforced in black and white now. So That's it's good. Mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have, you know. mm -hmm. I was gonna say, we have a couple minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Vanessa, did you want to ask a, a question? I was just going to say that's along the same lines, how I feel like, you know, your phones are always stalking you. You know, I'll mention that, oh, I got to go get toothpaste. And all of a sudden I'm seeing ads on every social media about toothpaste. Yes, yes, So, yes. It, you know, I'm, that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I just add, though, what you were saying, th um, I do think that there's a lot of propaganda that happens on both the left and right when it comes to media. And um, unfortunately, depending on what your cup of tea is, I think what you said, um, Roxanne, is right. You're going to hear what you feel like you need to hear or want to hear, you know. And unfortunately, uh, when I look at a lot of my conservative Christian friends, 
they get their media resource is Fox News. Mm -hmm. And the problem is Fox News lies to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just <laughs> the truth. I mean, but but don't settle if you're if you're you're liberal and you feel good about that. Uh, uh, let's go to MSNBC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> they lie to you too. Uh -huh. well, here's, here's the thing. Let me put this out here, because everybody on here are people of color, and I think one thing that we know, in intrinsically, we know this. We know people lying. <laughs> we we know that we know these media sources don't really have our back. Let's just right. be honest about it. And so, you know, when I get a lot of my uh, white friends will try to hit me up and say, hey, man, you need to listen to this media source. You need and stop listening to CNN. They they presuppose that I that I believe what CNN is telling me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, thank God that I mean, I think we I, I wish I could remember the quote that Malcolm X said, but he talked about how to dissect. He talked about this idea of dissecting the media in ways that you don't hear what, what you got to hear what they're not saying, which I know that probably doesn't make sense. It make a whole lot of sense, but you got to weed through the lies to get to the truth. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to put this out here. If you don't, please, just one last thing that I got to say. The one thing that I think a lot of people miss, and look, this is not, I'm not bashing Donald Trump. Just not, but I'm going to put it out there. If Donald Trump is saying the same thing on MSN, NBC, CNN, and Fox News, the exact same thing, we don't have to doubt what's being said. And I think, like I would say, it doesn't matter whether it's Donald Trump or Joe Biden or whoever, if people are putting out, I know, I know that you can twist, you know, you can you can kind of flip what people are saying, but if they're constantly saying the same thing over and over again believe what they're saying. And so that's the part of the problem that I'm having right now as it relates to race. And, and I think, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's problems all over with when it comes to race. But, but if you're a white person and you constantly listen to Fox News, who's telling you that, that Donald Trump is a good guy and he means to buy, I had a guy a good conservative friend that just hit me this past week and said, man, I think Donald Trump is good for black people. How okay. so? Wow. Wow. How, how so? We have a, we have a, a, com a question of someone just piped in. Yes. Yeah, so um, Corinne wants to know, how do we address the system? What recommendations do you have for communicating with our politicians and district attorneys? So give us a short version answer. <laughs> Is there any tips you would say? Right. I, I, I say uh, we do it at the polls. Um, Good. You know, if if there is, uh, I think, right, people uh, may sell us so emails and letters uh, say a lot in social media, says a lot. And when they see there's a group of people that feel the same way, voicing themselves, they pay attention they really pay attention. That's why protests are good. So if you're putting, you're challenging these people in office to do something and they're not, we don't hire them anymore. And we hire them when we go vote. And those uh, midterm elections, those are major elections. That's where you get the change locally. Yeah. We have another question. <laughs> From Tracy Andrews. Uh, it's a comment slash question. The conspiracy theories are running wild in alt-right circles because pundits are, are intentionally throwing fuel on the flame. How can I, as a white evangelical thinking individual, dismantle the flawed logic and fear that is perpetuating the insanity? Uh, dismantle evangelicalism. Oh. All together. All together. Ooh. And embrace Ooh. Jesus. I love that. Wow. Embrace Jesus. Yeah. Well, I, I have mean, a lot to say about that, but I'm gonna let up. I love that. Jesus <laughs> is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come. He is the way, the truth, and life. We don't need systems. We don't need, you know, the we don't need to to have these subgroups and ideologies. We need to embrace the true and living God. And that's part of the problem. Do you look here's think about this? I'm this country was built 
on false ideology that was surrounded with Christianity. They patched Jesus on top of, on top of to enslave people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, so I, I posted this today. It's a miracle that black people would actually embrace this Jesus. Think about that. Yeah. That's a miracle. So I said, in terms of, forget the conservative, take that out. Now, I'm not talking about policy. If, if your policies, because if I could be honest, there are parts of me that, that are very conservative. I have a very conservative part of me, like when it, you know, so not to get into that, that's policy. Aside from policy, forget putting politics and your Jesus in the same box because they don't fit. Yeah, I love, I love that, Pastor. I, I have a problem, even I've posted something myself as a late that stop using the Bible to manipulate people to vote a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm, I've saw that with, um, as you, I love the evangelical piece because it, it was being used to tell people to, well, the, vor the abortion um, comes up every four years. I don't hear anything about it <laughs> in between elections. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter, when you go look at the numbers, even from when President Obama was in office, abortion had gone down tremendously. And Roe v. Roe v. Wade hadn't been touched. And they, you had Republicans controlling the, the Senate for years. Nobody's changed it, but we bring it back up and evangelicals bring it back up because they want you to vote a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so I say, yeah, let's put Jesus at the forefront. Stop yeah. using the Bible to manipulate people. Because if, if, you're people a Christ, if, if you're a Christ follower, like I, mm -hmm. yeah, because I mean, there are going to be people that's listening to this right now that they say, well, I, I like the program, but I'm not necessarily sold on Jesus yet. But I would say, yeah, I agree with you though. If, 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 if you have embraced our God in the person of Jesus Christ, then yeah, let him be first. Let no other mm -hmm. God come before him. Is that, oh, wow. is, that cut and dry? is that too cut and dry, man? Did I go hard? It's good to uh, <laughs> Wow, this was such a, this was power pack. We're gonna have to do this again. Before we, before we go, we, I have one last question and that, you know, you guys as black men, I think um, may have to take a lot of it, the brunt of what's happening. Uh, in our country. And so as women, we just want to know how can we support you in this, uh, during these times? Mm -hmm. Pastor? Pastor. <laughs> well, I, I'll be real honest with you. Um, I think women, how you, you are doing it. In fact, I, I feel like women, this for me, 2020 is the year of the woman. Like it's the year of women. You've stepped up. I'm looking at all of the women. I mean, there's a new commander uh, at the Naval Academy, 21 years old, who just, she, you know, she's, and she's a Christ follower and she's doing this. She's leading 5,200 men now and women. Um, I think about all the mayors who have stood up doing, you know, uh, bottoms from Atlanta and then the mayor of Washington, D.C. and the, I, 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 all I'm seeing is powerful women who are standing in powerful places. And I almost want to ask you, what can we do to support you? That was right. my next question. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. So, so, no. <laughs> so, so let me just answer from my vantage point. I, I want to say thank you to the women for your support and for you powering up during this season. Because yeah. for me personally, I feel strengthened <laughs> by it. I feel perfect. So I'm, you know, yeah. That's why I'm at. Y'all welcome. Y'all welcome. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll be here until December. <laughs> Can't make any promises with 2020. We're not going on vacation. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. We need a break. <laughs> We're going on vacation in December. <laughs> it was good while it lasted. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts, Elder John, about that same question? Mm -hmm. I think I think the women are supporting us um tremendously um i'm big on social media because that's where the people are you know the apostle paul said he went to the crowd of people and a lot of them are on social media so you see it when people are posting i say for the single moms uh continue to talk to your sons and let them know that they are valued um to make sure that they understand uh especially when you're dealing with uh police encounters when you have young men driving uh, tell them the goal is to come home, you know, you know, 
you're not going to win that fight, that battle, physically arguing with an officer with a weapon, and he could be upset. You don't know what's going on with him. So the goal is to come home. So the support is to keep keep reinforcing who they are, doing the right things. Uh, and the truth of the matter, sometimes our, our young men don't do the right things. We can't ignore that. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we are not just protesting because of what we're seeing, but also making sure they're doing the right things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that women are definitely, you're already a support from what I can see. I don't really see anything negative and anybody saying, you know, stop that marching, y'all, y'all causing trouble. I don't see that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I see more, actually, I see probably more of the women being more vocal than the men, you know? Like, you know get, get out the way. Thank you for Black saying Black Lives Matter. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, bro. So I, can I just say this real quick? Like, I think that's important to say because too, too often women have been kind of pushed to the side and marginalized. And I, and I think, you know, give credit where credit is due. Y'all have stepped up in a powerful way during this season. And brother, I want to thank you for saying that. Like, because some men are threatened by the power of women. And I'm like, man, we're, we're allies in this, uh, right? I mean, we're, you know, so we're allies because we're all, we're all, um, promoting change. But honey, can I just say this too? And if you're white that's that's listening to this, if this was hard for you to hear, I, th I love um, the title of this, be being the change. Like, like I, I would say, knowing everybody on here, man, nobody's trying to single out any race or anything. Like, I believe this is a time when this country really needs to come together in unity. And, and the way that happens is we have to listen to each other and learn from one another and lament and move and love. Like that has to happen. But, but it's not going to happen if we run back to our own personal ghettos. That's just not going to happen. And I believe God's commanded us, commanded us to move forward in this day and time. And I'm just, how, what would it look like if, if we led out in love? What, what, what would it look like if, if all of a sudden conservative Christians and liberal Christians would come together and say, hey, look, apart from the politics, we're just going to love one another. And in loving one another, we're going to start loving the world. What, maybe that might, just might convince somebody that we'll, who we serve is something real. Yeah. And so for me, I just, you know, I just, yeah, I promote, I, I'm promoting love and unity. I'm with you. I'm also love. promoting truth. Let's be honest about what's going on. Yes, sir. Well, I want to thank you both for coming um, and joining us tonight. Were there any last words, Elder John, that you wanted to say before we close out? Uh, just, I just want to thank you, ladies, for allowing us the opportunity to serve. I think this is a, a continued conversation. I don't think you can exhaust the whole conversation, um, this topic, in one in one meeting. Um, but I do, I do believe that um, I'm a faith man, and so I got to speak what I pray. If I'm praying for change, and I have to speak change and act like there's change, doesn't mean that we're not going to progressively do things to get change. But uh, I walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. So I am trusting that when I'm walking by faith and what I pray is happening. And so I got to look at everybody, and I encourage everyone else to do the same through the eyes of Jesus. And Jesus saw everybody through love, no matter who they were. He went to the, and there, and the truth of the matter is, uh, some of the folks that are racist are in fear and they're hurting mm -hmm. and they don't realize it. So it takes intercession for that. And so we got to get away from our own internal hatred for them to really intercede and pray for somebody that hates you because they don't understand because they're walking, it's a fear. And all that is, I think all that, springboards from fear and so pray 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 <laughs> nice and i'm i'm so combining you both pastor elwood you said you're everything you're doing in love and um you're saying pray so i'm combining and say to walk in love and prayer instead of fear and hate right mm -hmm. is that yeah. Thank you. Good. Good did, I did it. <laughs> yeah, good summary. <laughs> so I just want to thank everybody also on Facebook Live for joining us, for your questions, for chiming in. Also, feel free to follow us on YouTube at the Chat and Shoe Show um, to catch our shows. And we'll also air this as well if you missed any part of this um, as an episode later. 
And then follow us if you haven't already on Facebook. We're also on Instagram at Chat and Chew Show. And other than that, have a wonderful evening. Yes. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> This show was brought to you by The Chat and Chew Company. Music by Elwood Jones. Lyrics by Roxanne. Bring a Chat and Chew live event to your organization. Contact us at chatandchewshow at gmail.com.